welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 144th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. For all my fellow Francophiles out there, and for anyone who wants to live well, simply, but luxuriously every day of their lives, this is the episode you've been waiting for. It's been a while since we've had a French-inspired post, and with that in mind, I wanted to make sure I made up for lost time. But before I get to what today's episode is all about, I wanted to give you a hint as to what this week's petit plaisir is. And it is a television show that just debuted that after having watched the first episode, I am hooked and I was over the moon with the writing. Cannot wait to share it with you and I think you'll enjoy it as well. But now let's get back to today's topic titled 20 ways to incorporate your love for the French culture into your everyday. We're going to dive into all sorts of different examples and simple ways the everyday can become all the more luxurious without spending money. So let's get started. Recently, a good friend of mine who is also learning French and inspires me with her advanced abilities asked how my learning was progressing. (laughs) Disappointed even to say it out loud, I stated I haven't been studying regularly, I'll be honest. And while that is entirely true, I find myself playing with a little bit of the language I do know unconsciously throughout my days and in conversations and activities spent with those who also know and love the language. I continue to share and be enticed by French theme posts, articles, and books. It's really just a part of my day. I, I zone in on those topics. I zone in on those titled articles. In fact, last weekend, I shared the special uh, insert in the New York Times about the new approach to essential French cooking. It's a fantastic insert. If you don't have it, I've provided a link to it on the blog, and I'll also provide another link on today's show notes. If you're also someone who's on Twitter... I am regularly sharing articles. Not all of them are French inspired, but I'm always sharing articles that I find interesting. It's it's something that just I am naturally gravitating towards. I'm curious about it. I'm passionate about it. But as I said at the top of today's episode, I haven't created an episode in quite some time. And so time has come for me to dive into this post and I have been more than ready. A primary reason why today's post is what it is, is that recently my daily schedule has shifted ever so slightly to make time for a very special individual in my life. And what I have run back to every single day and been thankful for is the simply luxurious approach to living. I may be thinking, oh, Shannon, you're just talking about your brand. You're really just putting it out there. You're trying to talk it up. No, that is how I live. That is how I try to live every single day. It is the approach that I write about on the blog. It's what I share here on the podcast. But what I have realized and thus become more appreciative, why I've become more appreciative, is that that approach has enabled me to let go, to appreciate and savor the everyday moments and unexpected extraordinary moments in the ordinary routine. The realization of the approach of letting go of the unnecessary and focusing on the necessary being the key to easily flexing with life has inspired me to ardently protect and cultivate further these aspects, many of which are inspired by what I appreciate about the French and some would argue Western European cultures. And so let's just dive right into these 20 ways we can bring more contentment into our lives. Number one, depend on flavors from herbs, spices, and ordinary cooking staples to enhance the flavor of food. After a recent conversation with an acquaintance from Belgium here in Bend, I was reminded of the flavorful approach the French and other European countries take to cooking. First of all, they cook, they play with the food and the flavors, and they don't bury their food in thick, sugar-laden sauces. The simple sautéing of garlic and shallots and olive oil to provide a flavorful base or finishing with lemon to maximize the flavor. How about adding some thyme or rosemary and don't forget the salt and pepper while you are cooking. These simple, essential touches and ingredients make a significant, wonderful difference in the flavor of your food. Number two, 
Discover the pleasure of thoughtful conversation. Let go of small talk. Part of being a good conversationalist is caring about what your fellow converser is saying. Secondly, it requires of both to let go of where the conversation might lead, to let go of a plan. This is not easy for goal-driven, busy Americans. We want to accomplish something, complete it, and move on. However, deeper, more intimate relationships cannot be built on demand. Slow down, relax, and let the conversation flow naturally. Forget looking at the clock and just enjoy the moment. Number three, cook at home unless a restaurant can do it better. Stock and prepare a kitchen that lends itself well to cooking whatever may be in the refrigerator on any given night. Make sure your epicerie is properly stocked and the necessary cooking utensils are at the ready. And I provide a link to both of those lists on today's show notes so you can get an idea of what we're talking about. Then begin to experiment. Initially, this can be intimidating. But with advice from those who know how, observations, and practice, you will be whipping up delicious, simple, satiating meals Monday through Sunday, if you so desire, and most of the time probably without even looking at a cookbook. I share a few links to posts on how to become a cook in your own kitchen, and you can find those on the show notes. Number four, re-examine your diet. Eat flavorful, satiating food rather than empty calories. Eating well involves an appreciation of the food you are eating, as well as respecting your body. We shouldn't have to swear off the delicious in order to tend to our cholesterol, etc. Moderation is the key, and that requires of each of us knowledge about how the foods we eat affect our bodies. While eating is necessary, we all know that doing so mindlessly shouldn't be part of our approach. For example, reduce the soda intake and increase the fruit and vegetable consumption. Number five, savor a glass of wine with a home-cooked meal any day of the week. To compliment, not to cloud. Wine with dinner, a beautifully thoughtful dinner, carefully prepared and presented, deserves a savory partner in the form of a glass of wine. Sip, nibble, slow down, and savor the culinary moment in front of you. Number six, reduce refined sugar. White sugar, white flour, packaged, processed foods with additives. In other words, know what you are putting into your body and what those ingredients do to your body. I provide a link to my January resolution about reducing or eliminating refined sugar on today's show notes and some of the findings and discoveries I came across. Number seven, think for yourself. Have an opinion grounded in fact. Take the time to be aware of the world around you and refrain from rash assumptions. Being tactful in your approach and being aware of your audience reduces the need to be politically correct. Rather, be honest, thoughtful, and always open to discussion. Number eight, fall in love with daily rituals. From my morning ritual breakfast of still oats to my Friday evening unwind that begins with a long walk with the boys, cultivating daily, even weekly, and monthly rituals gives us something to look forward to regularly. As someone who loves to step into the kitchen and prepare a meal, this daily ritual is something I enjoy beyond measure. Maybe for you, it's your weekly yoga class or sitting down with a newspaper or a new magazine. Whatever your rituals are, protect them and cherish them. Number nine, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. In number 12 below, which we'll talk about in a minute, skincare will be discussed. And part of an effective skincare routine is drinking water. Keep the consumption of alcohol and sugar drinks low and make water your drink of choice. Number 10, treasure the dining experience. Sit down for meals, set the table, turn off the television, converse, slow down. Add some flowers to the table to make it inviting even when it's not in use. Create a space that beckons to guests, asking them to sit down and enjoy a memorable moment. Number 11, master a skincare routine. Last month, I shared with you eight of my favorite skincare products. Some items are inexpensive and some are an investment. However, the attention we pay to our skin is not a vain task. It is a task modeling respect for ourselves and the visage and therefore the woman we present to the world. Figuring out the skincare routine that will work best for your skin and age will take time and will in some aspects be an ever-evolving process. But most items you discover that work for you and your skin will work for you throughout your lifetime. Go, explore, and then pamper yourself each day. Number 12, embrace the capsule approach to style. 
Less is more and simple, well-curated style speaks volumes, beautiful, powerful volumes about the woman wearing the clothes. Learn more about how to style your own capsule wardrobe um, on the blog. There is a link and I dive deep into it and even give you an example of how to curate your own capsule wardrobe as well as I have shopped in the Simply Luxurious Life shop under capsule wardrobe. Click on that and I've done the shopping for you for your seasons for fall, for spring, and for all seasons. And that is updated a couple times each year. So number 12 is embrace the capsule approach to style. Number 13, reserve social media for what inspires you. The reason I follow the Instagram accounts I do is to tap into inspiration, beauty, and a reminder of all that is full of goodness, diversity, and unexpected magnificence in simplicity that surrounds us each day. Rarely do the accounts I follow include selfies, but rather city and nature scapes, a creative fashion combination, books, museum exhibits, and vignettes of my favorite places around the world. Why not share with the world what inspires you, and you never know who you will move. Maybe it will even be yourself. Number 14. Let go of trying too hard and begin to trust yourself. Last Monday morning, I woke up to sunshine and blue skies in Bend, Oregon. The birds were beginning to chirp and the snow was gradually melting. I looked outside and I just smiled. Sometimes we get in our own way of savoring the gift that is life. In all of its simplicity, for some reason we think it has to be hard. And if it's not, we make it so by overanalyzing, doubting, sabotaging, or overextending ourselves. Life and how we exist in it is simple, and it begins with being present, savoring the everyday, listening to yourself, and adjusting to let go of what doesn't serve you and seek out what does, and how you can contribute positively to the world. The everydays are the best part, and while it is a grand and necessary task to set goals, set them, and then focus on what can be done today, allowing the unexpected to occur, and dance with the days as they unfold. 15. Savor a piece of dark chocolate regularly. Whenever I share my daily ritual of eating a dark chocolate truffle with a cup of hot tea each evening, I do not partake in dessert. Some nod their head and contemplate adding it to their routine, and others chuckle at its decadence or simplicity. Either way, I love this daily ritual and have been incorporating it into my life since the blog's commencement. I don't care if people agree with it or not. It works for me. But now we know that the powers, and we have known this obviously for a while, and I've shared it many times, but here's a simple reminder of bringing simple luxury into our everyday lives. The powers of dark chocolate are subtle, yet powerful. And the flavor, as we know, is magnificent. (laughs) Number 16, keep your Sundays sacred. Speaking of rituals, one of my favorite rituals takes place on Sunday. Last week, it took place on Monday due to my schedule, but I made sure to savor it all the same. As I share on those show notes um, in a picture that I posted on Instagram, Norman, Oscar, and I are indulging in our Sunday, in that case, Monday ritual. The Sunday newspapers arrive, three in total. The hot tea is poured after a long walk with the boys, and a croissant is often part of the moment as well. Hours can pass before I've made it through all of the intriguing articles. No matter how you prefer to spend your Sunday, protect it, guard it, and remember that doing so is an investment in the quality of your life and specifically in kicking off the week to come, ensuring it has its best chance possible to be a week to enjoy. Number 17. Think critically. A few years ago, I shared a post inspired by a book titled The Thinking Life, How to Thrive in an Age of Distraction. And in sharing and in teaching rhetoric in my second job that isn't blogging, I continue to be more convinced that the thinking life is the best way to live. Taking in all we are exposed to can be overwhelming, but knowing how to do so effectively will enable us to live well. And by applying the tools of rhetoric established by Aristotle to examine any piece of information that we come across, we can make sure we are not being led around by the nose and indeed are thinking for ourselves. And I provide a link to those tools of rhetoric on today's show notes if you're curious about what I'm talking about. Number 18, revel and appreciate your uniqueness. America is a self-help culture, and while there is absolutely nothing wrong with continuing to grow, as we talk about next to number 19, not believing we are enough or not accepting ourselves for who we are in this moment right now is not easy for many of us. After all, if we could just lose those last few pounds, if we could just earn a slightly higher paycheck, if we could just fix our relationship status, focusing entirely constantly on those small changes robs us of the now. And who you are right now, however flawed, is a beautiful thing. Number 19, invest in intellectual wealth. 
Make learning one of your favorite pastimes. Whether it is learning how to skate ski, as I did this winter for the first time, learning how the three branches of the U.S. government work regarding checks and balances, or learning how to cook sole meniere, tickle your mind and follow your curiosity and you will always find youth to be alive within you. Last but not least, number 20, quality over quantity in all things. The following 19 ways to incorporate the French culture into your everyday life at their core involve appreciating the experience and allowing what works well to exist without the excess. Quality, quality, quality. Above all else, quality. And what works well for you may not be what works well for someone else. So what each of us chooses to invest in will indeed be different. But if your goal is to build a life that enables you to enjoy the everyday and not constantly be dreaming about tomorrow, then your tomorrows need not to be worried about. For you are ensuring now, today, in the moment, that they will be magnificent as well. For the links to all the different posts I talk about and articles that I mentioned, visit the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 144. And if you're also interested in more French inspired uh, podcast episodes, I'm going to read off a list of podcast episode numbers so you can easily find them. Because as you know, the show notes, all you need to do is put the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast and then the number, no spaces, and it'll take you right to it. So the most recent one we've done is... We did one last fall, episode 127. We talked about the ways to live like a Parisian. We also did a style post about the style um, essentials for a Francophile. That would be episode 32. And we also talked about, and this would be similar to today's episode. So if you enjoyed today's episode, this would be one to look into and listen to. It's episode 23, and it's the French way, luxurious ways to enjoy the everyday. And lastly, the first Francophile episode was episode four, and it was all about how to indulge your inner Francophile. So I'll read those numbers off again. That's episode four, 23, 32, and 127 if you're interested in more French-inspired episodes. But we still have to get to this week's Petite Place here, and I think you're going to enjoy this show, so stay tuned. I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. This week's Petite Plaisir is The Good Fight. And it premiered on CBS last Sunday, so two Sundays ago. And it is, I guess you could call it a spinoff from The Good Wife with Juliana Margulies. And Juliana Margulies is not returning. This is not her show anymore. It is now returning with two of the lawyers you probably came to love and appreciate for one reason or another. One who was on the show the entire seven seasons. And the other who just joined the cast the last season of The Good Wife. So Christine Baranski and Kush Jumbo return to take this new series from where The Good Wife left off, literally where it left off, and then take it into an entire different direction. So the first episode was on primetime television on Sunday, but the rest of the episodes, so there's 10 total episodes in the first season. The remaining nine are only available on CBS Access. Now you can get all the episodes as they become available. They'll become, a new one will become available each Sunday night. So you can pay just under $10 for a month. And since there's 10 episodes, it'll be just three months you need to pay for. You can also purchase by episode. So it depends on what you want to do. Now, This is still created by the same people who created The Good Wife, Robert King and Michelle King. It takes off the premise of law and current events. It dives deep into very pertinent issues that we're discussing right now in the news. In fact, the first episode, the first shot is Christine Baranski's character sitting watching the results of the election. They actually taped that scene twice because they didn't know at that time who had become president. So they are with the times. They are staying up, but it's well written. And before I go in any further, let me share with you the trailer of The Good Fight. I'm resigning. To go where? Nowhere. I'm retiring. Congratulations, Diane. (laughs) Maya, how you doing? Good. Oh, your first day as a lawyer. Follow me and try to keep up. Luca, here's Lockhart. Hello. Sorry I'm late. Diane, I heard you're retiring. It's terrible. You're going to lose your last case. (laughs) Look at you. 
Diane, tell me what a great mentor you are. She's been rocking it at work. Doing my best, like you, Dad. Arrested Henry Wendell on suspicion of running a multi-billion dollar Ponzi scheme. What about my... My retirement money. It's all gone. And we're down we go, go. They have a warrant. They're searching our apartment. Down we go. This is a nightmare. Are you okay? Will I get my money back? Then don't ask me. What do you propose? Uh, that, that I not leave. Unfortunately, I, I don't think that works for us. Hey, I'm gonna sue you for every single cent! Talk about the most hated person in America. This was my life. It's gone. You have to stay sane. I had a friend. She went through the same thing. Said it was hell for a few months. Pardon yourself. Ignore what people say. It's hard, but it ends. Eventually, everyone reveals himself. As you can see, the first episode, we get right into the muck and the mire with Christine Bransky's character learning that her money that she has saved up, she was actually going to go buy a, a, a state in Paris and a vineyard is gone because of a Ponzi scheme. And it is her goddaughter's father. Her goddaughter's father, who is the man who brings her down. At least that's what we begin with. Who knows how it'll all play out. This series is far more diverse. It is far more edgy because they have more liberties on CBS Access that they did not have on primetime television. So look for maybe a little more cussing, a little more racy issues to come up in their first season, as has been alluded to in various interviews with the cast. I'll leave a link on today's show notes at simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 144 to learn more about how to get your CBS All Access and subscribe to watch the remaining nine episodes. But if you haven't seen the first one, you can also see the first one on CBS All Access. And I highly recommend that you do. I think you will thoroughly enjoy it and it will satiate the void that may have been left when The Good Wife had its series finale. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, the Simply Luxurious Life, Dot com, or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide. To stay caught up on the most recent podcasts, blog posts, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or your morning coffee, just in time to jumpstart the weekend. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bon genie.